It is insanely difficult in Minecraft to detect something as simple as whoever pressed the button. It is so difficult in fact that we just figure that whoever presses the button must be whoever is closest to it. But whoever is closest isn't always the one who pressed it. Over here I've got my camera account 100% more and if he presses the button he says cheese. However, when I press the button it's still 100% more who says cheese. Now in this tutorial I'll explain how you can detect to press the button regardless of if somebody else is closer or not. <laughs> now to make this work we'll need to have a custom advancement which means that we'll need a data pack. Now for this tutorial I'll be using VS Code to work with my data pack but of course you can use any other text editing software that you have. Also, on my Patreon, I have a template data pack that you can get for free. You don't have to become a member to get it. Patreon just seemed like a good way to host it. There's a link in the description. Whoosh. If you're not familiar with VS Code, this is it. We have our folders over here on the left and on the right, this big screen, this is where our files are. And if you're using my own data pack template, you will see something that looks a little bit like this. You have your data with Minecraft and template as a namespace. And in here we have functions, predicates, and tags. Now these aren't all the things that we need. In fact, we need to make a new folder here. But these are just the ones that I tend to use very often, so that's why they're in my template. Let's make a new folder called advancements. There we go. Also, you will find that inside the functions folder there's load and tick. And we don't actually need those for this data pack, so we're just going to delete them. And I'm actually fairly certain that we don't need Minecraft namespace either so we're going to delete that one as well and if it ends up turning out that i was wrong then this bit doesn't make it into the video now that we have our data pack set up we can actually go ahead and not be in vs code anymore <laughs> now creating a custom advancement in minecraft is really tricky and we're not going to bother doing that manually we're going to go to this really cool tool called misote on github or maybe it's a tool by somebody named misote i don't actually know but it's on github and there's a link in the description there we are misote now over here we have some popular generators we want an advancement generator you should be greeted with this screen over here we're going to add a little criteria that we're going to call button breast there we go and i'm not sure i did that right i'm going to get rid of this one because i don't think it does a thing now with this criteria we're going to detect who's pressed the button the name itself doesn't matter but this just makes it easy to remember the criteria that we need here is any block use and then we're going to add a condition for location we're choosing conditions and then we get all of this over here the condition is a location check, which is there. And then we're going to skip all of this. We're going to go to block. And then we're going to say we want multiple blocks because there are multiple types of buttons. And if in here we just type Minecraft colon buttons, then that will include all the buttons including buttons that will be added in future releases of Minecraft. Now you can see that as we're working on this over here, this screen gets updated with all the information that we're putting in. And if you understand what's happening here, then kudos to you. This is the reason, this looks complicated. This is the reason we're using a tool for this and we're not doing it manually. We wanna go over here next, add to bottom it says, we click it, we can add another condition and we want to match tool. Once we've set this to match tool, we're not going to do anything else with it. What this does, it will match the tool in your hand, the item that you're holding. For example, if you wanted to detect a button when you're holding a, um, uh, ooh, a birch door, for example, we could add birch door there and then it would only work if you press the button with a birch door in your hand. But we want any item and by leaving it empty, we're telling it any item goes, including no item at all, which is interesting, but that's how it works. Now we're almost done here in Miso. We want to add a reward and the reward is going to be a function. Now we haven't made this function yet, but I have a good feeling that I know what it's going to be called. And so we're going to type in template, which is the namespace for our data pack. And we're just going to say button pressed. This is a function that will trigger whenever all of these checks that we just put in when they when they succeed, right? And we can see over here it's updated it as well. It's brilliant. We can press download here. Whoop, there you go. Whoosh. And once you have it downloaded, you can take the advancement and toss it here in the advancement folder. We're going to rename this though to button pressed because that's a little bit easier that way. And here in functions, we're going to create a new file called button pressed, right? Button pressed 
dot mc function. And so it should be now that whenever the button is pressed, it's going to trigger this function that we just created. Whoosh. I like to put a little descriptor at the top over there. And the first thing we're going to do here is add advancements revoke at s, at s is the player that's triggered it. And we do only template colon button press. Oh, that's not right. Button pressed. So it's going to revoke only the advancement button pressed, the one that we created over here. Now revoking the advancement is really very important because you can only get an advancement once, meaning that once you've pressed the button, you won't be able to do it again. And so that's not really good, is it? And next what we're going to do, and this is what we'll be using in game to detect that someone has pressed the button. We're going to tag at S, whoever pressed the button, we're going to add a tag called button pressed recently. That way we know that this person who has this tag has recently pressed a button. And you know what, let's go and test it in game, shall we? Let's see, first we're going to not press a button and see if we have any tags. 100% media list, no tags. Now when I press a button, I'm going to grab a jungle button because again, it should be any button. We press it, we're going to see the list and something went wrong. Uh oh, I think I know what vendor are. You're supposed to reload it. I'm a professional, I swear. So now when we press it and we run the list tag, we can see I have a button pressed recently tag. Now basically what we can do here where it says execute as the nearest player, we can just add a condition here, add the nearest player whose tag is button pressed recently. And so now it's only going to say cheese to whoever has that tag. But here is an issue. If I press it, I still have this tag. If I press it again, I still have this tag. I will always have this tag. We need to reset this tag. And that is not as straightforward as you may think, because we cannot just say tag at s remove the button pressed recently tag. There you go. Because that means it will remove that tag before it has the chance to execute whatever is in here. Basically, we need to have it reset the tag after it has executed whatever is in here. And so what we're going to do in here is first of all, remove this, we don't need it anymore. And then we're going to go create a new file called button pressed reset dot MC function. And again, I like to add a little, little explanation at the top. And over here, we're going to say tag at a, not at s, very important. Anybody who has the tag button pressed recently, remove the tag button pressed recently. Now note that we're doing all players. There's a reason for that. If we go back to our button pressed function, not the button pressed reset, the button pressed function in here, we're going to add a schedule command and we're scheduling a function and that will be template colon button press reset. And then we're going to do that in two ticks. And when you schedule a function like this, you don't actually schedule the selector with it. So this is executed as the server, which means that here in the reset function, we cannot use at s, there is no at s, or at least the server is, but the server won't have this tag. So we're just going to remove it from everyone. It's what I found works best. Make sure that you reload, because forgetting that would be silly, wouldn't it? And now with our camera account back in the world, we can see when he presses the button, we get 100% more, says cheese. When I press the button, even though 100% more is closer, it will say 100% me, says cheese. There we go, 100% more says it, I say it. If I press it again, I say it again. We're doing a big switch through. I think you get the point, it works. We can also double check to make sure that the tag is gone. Absolutely no tags. Woo! And that is how we detect who presses the button exactly. It's a little overcomplicated. In most cases, just testing for the nearest player is still enough. But in the rare cases where you really need to know, this is how I figured out that you do it. It works! Woo! Now, as I've said, the data pack template will be available for free on my Patreon. However, if you choose to become a supporter, you can also get the data pack that we just created with the custom advancement over on my Patreon. And thank you very much if you do decide to check it out and become a member. Other than that, I hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial. I hope that it taught you exactly what you wanted to know, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye!